On slide 128, here is a hook um, with a Velcro, I mean, I'm sorry, hook with super glue on the IP joint of the thumb. Utilizing the Stata Progressive now, instead of doing a turnbuckle type, look towards the bottom of that slide and you will see Velcro. We have Velcro loop on, secured onto the splint, and you want the loop because you don't want it to be catching on everything. And then we have the hook, the Velcro hook that is attached to the inelastic line, like a fishing line, and then hooked onto the top of the nail or the tip of the nail on that hook. And that Velcro now can be adjusted per pa you know, adjusted with the patient per session um, and pull that thumb or that your targeted joint or motion into the desired motion that you want. On slide 129, we're seeing uh, this, this was a actual request from a patient. He was not satisfied with the lack of hyperextension. He wanted to be able to pull his finger or lift his finger up off the table. So we used a tuner or a merit device um, with an elastic, inelastic um, line static progressively and we pulled that finger up. It actually worked very well. The patient was extremely happy and we were able to achieve our goal within a three and a half week period. If you see what I have on my hand right now is called a flexion glove. That this is more of a circuit splint. Some, some authors propose it is not, but that's up for debate as well. But this splint is um, also something that I may implement prior to putting on some of the um, static progressive splints and so forth. As I showed you the cinch strap, this, might, this is a nice way to introduce to somebody who might be anxious, somebody that again doesn't have um, the insurance, that doesn't have the um, pain tolerance, that really refuses to put anything on their fingernails because they spend a lot of money on fake nails. So there are lots of reasons why we get uh, roadblocks. So having a flexion glove is also a very nice way you can work on some edema, you can modify it by putting on a static proponent of it um, to block the wrist from going down and you can also put a, a splint to to immobilize the MP joints into extension as we just talked about placement of the MPs on slide 163. So this is also another less expensive, less time consuming and great option that you may even want to do in conjunction or introducing before you actually get into your splinting.